Hey everyone, welcome back to Pretending with Dice. As always, I'm your host and game master AJ. Uh, I'm for once not reading this off a script, so my brain immediately just completely shit the bed. That was there. good. That yeah. was good. That was good. <laughs> that was close enough. Uh, as you, get, <laughs> I'll, I'll fuck it. I'll keep this in. Um, <laughs> I'm joined by Amy in this intro. Hi, Amy. Hi, AJ. <laughs> Uh, we, we thought we'd do something a little bit different as this is kind of the um, sort of our episode 100 sort of mini arc type thing. This would be episode 99. We're, we're getting the party started early. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. we're very excited. We're we just have a bit of a this. random chat in the uh, in the intro was what we thought about. I don't know. I don't know what about, but just, yeah. like. Well, really just to say how excited we are because, we've, well, you've worked really hard on it and, and we're us the cast have like had a ball so we're kind of really excited to share it mm, yeah this uh, i mean it's kind of like a three-part sort of set of well it's they're kind of like i don't well, i don't know what the, the run times are going to be but it's <laughs> kind of like a, a three sort of feature length kind of something i don't want to spoil it as well something a little bit different yeah. kind of episodes yeah it's it's going to be a treat the storylines have worked out really well um yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what music you've done, um, and just like it's gonna be really good. I don't. Yeah, it's really hard to not just to like spoil it. Yeah, <laughs> there's 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 some fun stuff in these. Yeah, I mean this is episode 99, so it's kind of this is if this is a three part kind of thing. If this is kind of the chapter one sort of thing but yeah i mean 99 episodes though i really i mean it's taken five years but i don't know where the time's gone i mean you joined us for oh how many has it got to be it's got to be oh, like I, 40 uh, or 50 or something including the world building ooh. episodes and stuff right because i mean we're this is like chapter 22 23 of the uh, frontier and then we did call of cthulhu yeah and uh a few one shots so, yeah and some D some stuff world world building things and i don't I know mean, where the time's gone anyway it's <laughs> just disappeared it doesn't feel that long but in some cases it, it, it does just because the amount of work that we've like all done and put into it and stuff and yeah. all the projects we're involved in and it's really exciting when one one you've been working on is like coming to completion and it's about to get like really shortly so it's, mm. it's exciting it's it's always really fun getting into a new uh, campaign and things and and then slowly seeing it come out i feel like uh, podcast time is different as well, especially with the like i mean obviously it's different different types of podcasts but i mean t- you know the, the our kind of podcast actual play kind of ttrpg podcast like there's sort of like I, I kind of always underestimate how long these things are going to run for so like uh, the, uh, before COVID, actually, I put a video mm. off my YouTube being like, this is one of the cool things we're going to do on Pretending with Dice in 2020. And it was like, I, I named like four different games <laughs> and like all this. And then like we've been running Frontier now for nearly a year. <laughs> well, no, I mean, we've been putting Frontier out for nearly a year. We've been running it probably a little bit longer than that because we were recording early. And that, I, I and think that's part of the beauty of, of TTRPGs, though, that they're always evolving as you're playing. Yeah. So... Sometimes the the end product is completely sometimes different from what you start off with, but that's like the fun of the, of this creative environment that we've got. And mm. It's like colla- collaboration between different um, like players and things to bounce off of. So it it's fun. It, I, I I love creating new things and like little like there's certain character dynamics that I I didn't int- anticipate until like more recently with 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 what some of the storylines we've been doing it's, it's, yeah. it's so fun um, I mean we, we, giving... some of those we don't want to spoil them either because they're, yeah, they're exactly, still not exactly, even exactly yeah. exactly that, that's still like four episodes down the road uh, we're a little ahead of the release schedule of recording which is yes. yeah not by a huge yes. amount but like enough where I don't <laughs> I'm just sitting here going like hang on what, what can we actually talk about here and what can I what yeah, am I trying to yeah. say for Hence, <laughs> spoilers hence why, hence why I'm being <laughs> Very vague, but, I'm, uh, but yeah, like it's it's fun, like finding uh, parts of your discover discovering parts of the character that you're playing. So mm. um, yeah, so it's really really fun. Yeah, and other players really, uh, uh, other people, other player stories and the oh, art. So yeah. I think oh, this is the thing, at, at this point, Frontier. Even though it feels like we've been doing it a while, but it also to me feels like oh, we know this is still the new thing we've been doing. 
but also at the same time it's like the longest running series on, on, on here <laughs> so it's kind of weird to me because it's like okay yeah this is the longest thing we've done but we've still been running for five years so in the grand scheme of things it's not a huge chunk of it but it's also yeah. i think it's it's more the fact that it's uh you've broken it up into smaller like story arcs like mm. you taking a you, you have a grand you have a, like a grand like season in mind but you've you've broken that into more accessible uh storylines yeah going through with the main theme which i think is different from like call of Cthulhu and uh, the star wars ones which were a shorter campaign but the episodes yeah. were were longer because uh of of where the players chose to go or or um how certain aspects of it played out it, they, they yeah. were kind of like one long sort of storyline as well wasn't it really it yeah. wasn't, wasn't so much kind of I mean there was like different story beats happening but mm-hmm. it wasn't like that okay so here's a story within a story sort of yeah so much as we're doing here because I mean we've had sort of but I'm, I'm, t- I'm kind of consciously trying to make it like here's like a star- if this was a season of Star Trek here's the part one exactly, two and three of, yeah. yeah this this story and stuff so yeah I think as well with Star Trek as well is that there's so much ma- there's so many things that could be going on in the background that you're the the, the current focus is unaware of mm. as well, which is is quite fun. And we, we've but been trying to layer some in, of that in as well. Yeah, is, and you it, could, it's yeah, always the, tough to do form- in this format a little bit, but like yeah, I've been trying to sort of drop little breadcrumbs about hey, stuff happening the and little, there's characters little, doing little things. Little foreshadow, and, little yeah. foreshadowing, little yeah. foreshadowing here and there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, and we and sometimes us players don't pick up on it, which is even more fun when we start list- when we start hearing back on certain episodes, and I'm like, I've completely forgotten about that. <laughs> I need to repeat that in my notes. I need to check my notes a bit more. I call back to something <laughs> that happened like twenty. 20- 20 episodes ago like from a year ago recording but because you know like I say I'm in kind of like this is the new frontier thing in my head I'm like yeah that wasn't very long ago but it's like I check the recording time it's like recorded in March 2021 I'm like oh okay well maybe maybe people have forgotten that detail <laughs> but, yeah but uh, it's, it's been fun though and like, like I said I, I can't wait for people to hear these very um three episodes this, um, I think they've all got their own particular flavour haven't they Let's just, that, I can say that without that yes. spoiling things Yes, um, this one that, that's that, that's going out now. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> oh, it's so oh. there's some there's there's some fun stuff. I think there. Yeah. <laughs> should, should we should we not keep people waiting any longer? Should we should we jump yes. jump into it? Okay. So uh, I hope everybody enjoys today's episode, and uh, I hope you'll all stick around for the uh, well for episode 100 next time as well. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for joining me for this intro, Amy. It was, uh, it's always fun to just randomly chat about stuff as well. It's always a pleasure coming on here. Yeah. Okay, let, let's get into the episode then. You, uh, Sullivan, Bond, and Jovar had a fun time the previous evening. Uh, not another heavy night of drinking, I'd say. Uh, just a, <laughs> a good post-holodeck meal and hangout uh, before returning to the ship. Uh, so no hangovers today. That's <laughs> really <laughs> what I'm getting at there. Uh, just for reference, uh, today is a Sunday. It's uh, February 5th, 2378. Uh, specifically, Stardate 55097.46. Uh, you and Bonge are in a crew lounge having a late lunch, uh, probably ten forward, <laughs> knowing Johnny's preference. Uh, you're about halfway through your plate of food uh, when your com badge sounds. Murphy's Conart. Connor. 
Can you please come to my office? Um, I have an, a special assignment for you. Oh, um, absolutely. Um, when, do you need me straight away? Uh, as soon as you can. Oh, absolutely. I'll be uh, there as, as soon as possible. Call it out. Right. And uh, yeah, he kind of straightens up and he's oh, special assignment. Sounds important. Yeah, that's... Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we should uh, get back. I need to prepare. Um, get back, huh? Um, well, she, she only really asked for you, Johnny. If, it, if it's all right with you, I kind of want to stay and finish my food. Yeah, okay. And Johnny kind of, like, picks up the pace, finishes off whatever food he might have had in his hand as he was going, and... Uh, Heading for the door. <laughs> yeah, he's going to go and get ready. He's, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, you put your uh, your hastily emptied uh, plate into the replicator and head down to Murphy's office. As you enter, uh, you're very quickly aware that this is uh, apparently not a meeting just for you. Uh, standing behind the desk are Murphy, Arela, and Commander Talin, and on your side are four other ensigns. Uh, you maybe recognise them by sight, uh, but yeah, probably you've probably not interacted with any of them um, before. Uh, apart from one of them, that is. Uh, one of the four is Ensign Faria, the uh, Denobulan engineer who you met the other day in the Arboretum with Bonge. Okay. Are they kind of like lined up? Yeah, I mean, I'd say casually, not, not stood at attention, but um, yeah, sort of lined up in front of the desk as you enter. So you are, you are. It looks like you're the last one to arrive. He'll he'll come in and join on the left, and uh, kind of stand to attention after a fashion. Not not like properly Arnold Rimmer style or anything like that, but Absolutely just like a, right. yeah, the, the same kind of vibe as everybody else. He's fitting in. Yeah. Uh, glancing up the line, uh, as I said, uh, there is Ensign Faria. Uh, you also see a Cation in a red uniform. Uh, a human woman who you recognise as one of the junior doctors in uh, Arela Sick Bay. She's been in there a couple of times when you've been in. And uh, finally, there is another human woman in uh, Blue Sciences uniform. A bit vibe wise, atmosphere wise, it's, it's not tense in here or anything, but you're kind of getting the uh, sort of feeling that uh, everyone on this side of the table doesn't really doesn't really know what's going on, <laughs> uh, much like yourself. Uh, you, none of you really know why you've been called here. Are the commanding officers in the room with us right now? Yeah, I'd say they're behind the desk, just sort of okay, right, right. chatting. I guess chatting cordially. Would you would you say? Yeah, I'd imagine Tillin's probably asking us on an update about um, Ray, maybe. She's maybe been informed about him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she, she's she's most likely up to speed by now. Um, at the very least, that's uh, maybe what the conversation you're just having is about. Uh, she clocks Johnny entering and uh, joining the other entrants and uh, quickly finishes up your conversation. Very well. I will endeavour to check in on Lieutenant Commander Ray at my earliest convenience. Sir. She turns to the uh, assembled ensigns. Thank you all for coming. You have been asked here today because your superior officers believe that you are the best choices from each of your respective divisions to represent the Tenzing in a friendly competitive event, which is to be held tomorrow aboard Deep Space 3. Each of the three ships of the expedition will be entering a team of ensigns such as yourselves. Now is probably a good time to introduce the uh, other ensigns in the room, uh, each of whom is going to be played during this event uh, by our regular senior officers, uh, our regular players, I should say. <laughs> um, I feel like now's a good time to do that. Yeah, sure. I imagine we're the ensigns are all looking at each other like, what the hell have they signed us up for? <laughs> Johnny's kind of smiling, like this is just another in the kind of like chain of interactions with these higher ranked individuals from the ship, and he's kind of enjoying the facts like, ah, yes, another opportunity. <laughs> another pr this another opportunity to prove myself. <laughs> yeah, I I've acted the fool before, but this time, I won't shine. <laughs> okay, so uh, who are each of you playing? Well, on this occasion, um, the guy who usually voices Lieutenant Commander Sabin Ray is going to be voicing Ensign Katarin. Are you going with the Cornish option on that, like we talked about before recording? Or <laughs> If I try and do a Cornish accent, it's not going to work out too well. I'm just going to go for a generic Uwar West Country. <laughs> Non-specific farmer. Non-specific farmer cat. Okay. Aye. That works best for me, I think. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be an experience. All right. Uh... <laughs> I thought, well, well, I was thinking about going Scottish, but we've got two genuine yeah. Scots on the channel. I don't want to upset either of them because they're both lovely people. 
And we also have two very different accents being from Scotland. <laughs> we do, yes. Exactly, and I would just murder both of them. <laughs> it's a weird amalgamation. So we're going with West Country instead. Who are yeah, right. Um, okay, uh, Dragon, who are you playing? I am playing Ensign Leela Anderson. She is from the science department on the Tenzing. Awesome. And Amy, who are you playing? Um, I'm playing Farah, who I'm probably going to get their name wrong. I do apologise. Yeah, it's Faria. Um, Faria. <laughs> 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 and she is a Denoblian, uh Did you say she was a site? Uh, She's an engineer. Engineer, engineer. Yeah likes to fix things yeah and also with them who I, I guess I will be not not as actively playing um, I'll be playing but more as a sort of just a regular NPC is uh, Ensign, uh, Ensign Haru who is one of the junior doctors who actually was one of the two who uh, welcomed you to the Tenzing when you first came aboard uh, Dr. Arela this is going to get weird while everybody's characters are all in the same room together <laughs> it'll work out in the <laughs> it'll be fine we won't do this too much <laughs> you can give the orders and then kind of send them on their way yeah I think that's probably yeah. the, that's probably a good idea okay so yes uh, Talin continues the challenge you are to face will be one of three holographic scenarios compiled by the station's training staff you will not be told what awaits you beforehand suffice to say though the challenge will be a test of your skill character teamwork ability and commitment to acting in the best traditions of Starfleet. The team which best exemplifies this will be declared the winner. This is for honour rather than prizes. Yes. <laughs> the stakes have never been lower. <laughs> Except this it's is... all reputation. So... Yes. <laughs> you'll be pay- yeah, you'll be playing for the reputation of the Tenzing. Participation is not mandatory, of course, but know that you have the full confidence of the command staff, each of whom has put your names forward individually for this effort. Johnny looks at Murphy at that moment and tries to catch her eye and give her a nod. Murphy's just going to ignore him for now. <laughs> <laughs> just look at look elsewhere. That I'm not acknowledging you, Connor. You did what you've done well. <laughs> Very subtle kind of eye roll that isn't visible to anybody. He's kind of intensely staring then, <laughs> looking for approval. Hoping... Then, okay, just so gonna do roll a slowly over to him, look, stare at him, arch an eyebrow until he like looks away, as if to say, "Don't make a big thing of this." Yeah. Sort of thing. <laughs> he kind of, like, yeah, a little bit flustered, kind of recognizes the stern look in the eye. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, this is a chance. A bit. It's like the si- silent message of this is a chance to prove yourself. Do not fuck it up. Yeah. He clearly pulls his attention back to what's being said. <laughs> not. She nods and then, like, just continues to listen. The competition will take place tomorrow morning at 1100 hours, so you will have until then to prepare yourselves. Report to the station's holographic training centre ahead of time, if you please. You should also know that the event will be broadcast to each of the ships and throughout the station so that your comrades may cheer you on. I would personally ask that you conduct yourselves professionally while under this extra public scrutiny. Are there any questions? Uh, not, not at this time, sir. She gives you a nod. She likes when there's no questions because it means that she has efficiently explained the situation. <laughs> Very well. I will leave any further specific inquiries to your own division heads. Good luck to you all. She nods to Murphy and Arela before heading for the door. Uh, also nodding to you, Katarin. Uh, you were her choice as head of operations to represent her division in your role as con officer. Murphy's kind of look at them all going, you can all leave now. <laughs> you can all get out of my office. <laughs> get out. Just get out. Go on, get. <laughs> You're all dismissed. Johnny looks at them all with a kind of... He, he's trying to convey a certain amount of like, come on then, and moves because... He knows. Don't mess with her. <laughs> <laughs> She's got that look. She doesn't want us in here anymore. But we better go. <laughs> yeah. She's stressed. Her friend's in the hospital. Well, in sick bay. She needs coffee. She's had to organise this with Arela, and now she'd like to go for a nap. <laughs> Leave. I want to sneak off and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I want to kip for twenty minutes. <laughs> I like the idea, though, Murphy being like, okay, that's it. Good. Well done. Get out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're all dismissed. Yeah. No. 
feel that there's slight hesitation in the room. She's like, please go. You can go now. She just looks at Johnny. <laughs> Johnny heads out then, and then kind of not leads the way necessarily, but he's, he's certainly looking back a little bit to see that like everybody's coming out behind him into the hallway. Okay, and so Amy and Dragon, you are re- you are released from your control of <laughs> Murphy and Arela. <laughs> so the five of you leave Murphy's office. Uh, once you're away from the senior officers, uh, Doctor Haru speaks up. Well, uh, this should be different. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm uh, I'm Haru, by the way. Oh, Johnny Connell. Um, I've experience with uh, Murphy, the commanding officer we were just dealing with there. Uh, yeah, it's a good thing that we got out of there quickly, to be honest with you. You don't want to cross her. <laughs> I heard she's a bit of a... Um, she runs a bit of a tight ship. Yeah, I've, I've worn out the uh, the knees on a few uniforms before, <laughs> crawling around in ducts. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, this is uh, good to meet you all. Uh, who are the rest of you? Hi, I'm Leela Anderson, science department. Johnny puts out a hand, give a handshake. And she'll shake his hand. Freya is just going to wave and be like, and um, I, I'm Freya, uh, engineering. Then um, Kataran steps over and goes, No, I'm Ensign Kataran. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Donny uh, proffers a handshake to him. <laughs> Quite a firm grip you got there. Oh, well, that, that's kind of my specialty. I'm in security. Uh, yeah, fair point, fair point. Special handshake training. I, I was going to give him, if you hadn't said that anyway, I was going to give you the like the kind of grip handshake, the test one that you get from some people. Oh. <laughs> I thought, like, you're really doing this to me right now. Like This is the test. Oh, you're We're doing the to- Donald Trump grab and pull. <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, 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 no, uh, guitar just goes, uh, uh, yeah, you gotta got to know how to get a good grip on them phasers. Oh, absolutely. I know very well. And he kind of wiggles both hands up. <laughs> Finger guns. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. I, I, I think I recognise y- your name, you, Ensign Connor, right? Are you yeah, the one they call Johnny Two Phasers? <laughs> are you the Are you the one? <laughs> um, I've, I've, I've not heard this, and he looks around the other crewmates to see if there's any recognition in, in that. Yeah, it's just gonna snigger. <laughs> it's finally going to put a name to a face. Johnny catches the snigger and kind of frowns a little bit. Um, I guess that's me. What? 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 What do people say? I uh, just, just they just say you know you got a bit of a reputation for being uh, on point with your phaser accuracy. Oh, oh, well, oh, well, yeah, that that's that's me. You you can rely on me. I mean, if we've got any tests to do with that kind of stuff. Anything to do with physical stuff, phases. I'm your man. Oh, splendid. Nice. Fantastic. Bonch does say that you spend a lot of time in the holodeck. Well, yeah. I, I train a lot. What do you mean? Is No, just, just, just that's what Bonch said. Oh, I'll, I'll have to have a word with Bonch and find out what he's been saying. <laughs> Um, any, anyway, anyway, um, so yeah, we should probably try and prepare for this. I mean, we don't even know what's going to happen. We were still trying to stop sniggering at the sheer <laughs> awkwardness of that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really went from zero to awkward very quickly. Like, it did. <laughs> yeah, it's Johnny. <laughs> um, but, so yeah, we, we, we should probably... I don't know. I, I don't know. We, I, I've all actually, I, I've actually got some experience with the um, training suite here. Perhaps we should uh, all head down there and uh, practice a little bit. Tough to know what to prepare, though. If they the whole point is, they're not telling us what we're going to run into. Very true. Have you got any ideas? Well, they've made sure that we've got a wide range of backgrounds to be going into this with. The commander said that we have to look at each of our skills. So I'm assuming we're going to have to have a puzzle or some sort of challenge to suit each of us. It's entirely possible they might want some... There might be a test in there that 
deals with piloting skills or operations from the con, that's my specialty. Do you think it's maybe a bridge simulation? It could be Kobayashi Maru. Mm. Kobayashi Maru? I thought they only did, I thought, I I know what it is, I thought they only did that at the Academy. Well, I mean, it's a classic test. I wouldn't put it past them, but we'll have to see, I guess. Maybe it's a new way of training us for it. I mean, the other option is that it's something that none of us will ever ever have come across before. I've I've, I've happened to have some experience in that. And Johnny kind of straightens up a little bit. I've I've been on some missions with some of those commanding officers that we were just meeting. And we we certainly ran into some, uh, well, I don't know how much you know about what we've been encountering recently. But, yeah, who knows? I know we had some plant samples come in a while ago. They were, um, interesting to work with. I mean, we did have that the that ship from the Tratirans. That was that was interesting. I also a little bit deja vu. Hmm. I've got a lot of questions about that. We never did really find out how they got that technology. Oui. I I I heard chatter that the uh, the ship that they were flying on was very close to the Phoenix, like the first I, warp ship. I I'll tell you, it was pretty close. I think it was about like eighty percent. I think at the end, similarity. Obviously, they they had their own, they they tweaked it a bit, but um, well, nice. we're we're still looking at it. We're still looking through it. Still to get up eighty percent similarity from control and even design. That's incredible, especially for a planet this far away from the solar system. Anyways. Wow. We're getting a wee bit distracted away from preparing for whatever it is that they're going to be throwing us at. Well, Ensign Connor here has got tactical experience, and since he's got access to some good training on the holodeck, from what it sounds like, maybe that's a good place for us to start and get a bit of practice in there, and if we think of anything else in our other respective fields, we'll take that on as well. That sounds like a plan to me. Yeah, well, what, very what, sensible. Uh, what exactly are we practicing, though? This is the thing. Why are not practicing? some light phaser practice first? Oh, oh okay. I, I haven't really held a phaser since uh, basic training. <laughs> well, we've all got to be prepared on some level. You never know what might descend on the ship. He's got a point. I mean, I'm more useful with a, with a spanner than a phaser, I'll admit. I'm better with an auto suture than a any kind of weapon, I suppose. Well, this day and age, the right setting on a phaser, you could use that to seal up a wound. Yes, but why Why would Why would I? <laughs> if Survival? Everything we need in sickbay. Yeah, but if you're all stranded on a planet and you haven't got your traditional medical supplies with you, you've got to make do with what's there. Being out in space is all about discovery, but survival as well. You don't know what you're going to find. In the right hands, a phaser is also an ele- a surgical scalpel and suture. Do upper thing. I don't know the fancy term for medical stuff. But case in point is, in Starfleet, you got to be able to adapt to the situation regardless of what field you specialize in. I mean, it could, it, it, it might be a moral question as well. We, do, we, we don't really know. But, I yeah, think that's... perhaps we should try and play out a scenario of some sort in the holodeck and try and incorporate something that might be able to have all of our skills come into play at some point. Maybe a, a war scenario or... I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Can the holodeck rerun simulations of past encounters from Starfleet vessels, like records of previous battles or engagements, maybe we could take something that happened in real life that we don't necessarily know too much about and try and fumble our way through one of those? I I think so, absolutely. I mean, I've I've done all kinds of stuff on the holodeck. We could certainly go back and play out something historic. All kinds of stuff, eh? (laughs) Johnny, branches and 
yeah, just training and that that kind of thing. You know, I'm starting to think that Johnny Two Phasers might mean something else entirely. But, but, but never, 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 never mind that. Um, I don't like the implications of that. Very <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, But it's actually, what does that even mean? Like. <laughs> So we should all go down to the the, the holodeck. Maria then. is just, and, uh, just still sniggering to herself. <laughs> like, I bet I'm, I'm imagining Bond just told her some things, and she's just going to be keep, keeping quiet about it. <laughs> she's like, no, no, I'm going to be polite. I'm going to going to not embarrass Johnny. You know. Johnny's thinking about wiping his uh, history. <laughs> <laughs> going to clear his cookies. <laughs> As, as they go in there, if if we if uh, at this point are we, are we going to leave the whole uh, hallway and perhaps <laughs> head down there? Because yeah, if, if you want to get a holodeck and run with it, this is up to you to tell me what parameters. But you could get a holodeck to run stuff in if you wanted to run some drills. <laughs> if the rest of the crews came for that, then yeah, yeah, head down there. And um, Johnny, as soon as he gets to the panel, it deletes the history <laughs> on his profile. <laughs> There's no chance anybody looking over his shoulder is going to see whatever he's been doing. Whatever. Get rid, get rid of his space cookies. So, I'll, I'll hold on, here's a question. Are you deleting your personal programs? No, it's Ooh. just what's been recently, like, used. Okay. So, yeah, all right. Well, yeah, okay. You're, you're able then to um, just wipe your most recent things things something that can't be accessed by anybody other than you anyway without a, a command override but um bonge bonge is out there <laughs> it seems like he's saying things <laughs> i don't trust him anymore <laughs> you know for me as an engineer as well she could easily probably hack into your stuff too <laughs> if she wanted to that seems like a bit of a breach of ethics, but... Yeah, it, it is, it is. She's not like that at all. She's very by the book. Either way, we've learned now that it only takes a couple of small comments to make Johnny panic and delete his history. <laughs> so, so what, what's, uh, what, are you, what are you programming in then? What's the, what's the plan here? Well, he's turning to everybody else and saying, um, anybody got an idea for a scenario that we could uh, try and play out? It's, it's up to you guys what you want to do. I, I'm, I'm leaving this fully in your hands. You're the ones oh. programming the... Uh, I've got it. Um, Siege of Deep, Deep Space Nine. When the card has Johnny Ooh. being yeah. a history buff on that kind of stuff. Mm. And it's also a fairly recent history as well, isn't it? Well, it's like five, six years ago. Yeah, because there's lots of like um, engineering stuff as well for that. Yeah. Uh, and the calm stuff. Because, yeah, they got to hack into places to get doors open and things or shields up somewhere. Okay. To make it simple, we could, we could just have it where it's just like a scenario on Deep Space Nine, Cardassians are attacking, and we're there trying to repel the force. Because there's got to be a scenario we can kind of win to some extent, and Johnny would be keeping that in mind, trying to program something. It might be better to not select exactly what it is that's happening. Yeah, let the Tell computer to make up. A random encounter. Yeah, let the computer make up from um, an attack. Yeah, so maybe specifically say to like the computer, like we want a scenario where we are defending a, a space station against attack by a, an unknown adversary or whatever. Yeah, but without because if we say ex a, like a specific historical attack, yeah, we don't then work out. Yeah, yeah. But then you're kind mm. of locked into it, really. Aren't you? Yeah, that's that sounds better actually. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, computer, give us a siege scenario on a Federation starbase. Um, and he looks to the rest of the, the group. Is there any particular difficulty level that I, you'd like any of this, uh, any aspects of this scenario to be set at? And Johnny's thinking about the fact that he's done previous training scenarios and he sets in one notch up higher than normal. For his like for like the enemy's physical abilities and stuff when he's going to be encountering them. Well, um, if this is a practice for competition, we ought to have it be as realistic as possible. Okay. Well, I guess we'll. Uh, he sets similar difficulty levels for the rest of the crew then. Kind of just a little bit above kind of the norm that they might be encountering, and uh, yeah, sets it off. Working. Program complete. Enter when ready. 
the doors slide open. Here we go. Okay, brace yourselves, everyone. Okay. Okay, so you step in, finding yourselves in what seems to be a circular operations control centre. There are windows ringing the whole room, uh, looking out into space, and in the centre of the room is a turbo lift, uh, the doors of which are currently closed. Arrayed around the centre are various control consoles, as you would expect, uh, each dedicated to different station functions, it seems, and uh, looking outside you can see that the station is in orbit of an Earth-like M-class planet. Uh, you don't, none of you, you know, recognise the planet, uh, it seems the computer has either pulled something quite obscure from a database somewhere, or it's just generated you a fully synthetic uh, setting for this programme. Uh, you are all alone in the room. Leela's going to walk over and start having a look around like generally okay are you looking for anything in specific or just out the windows at consoles things like that or at consoles okay um just looking at what sort of situation it is at the what the situation is at the start of this scenario okay uh, you're able to bring up a, a sort of overview on the main screen, uh, which is actually projected onto one of the wide exterior window panels, kind of like a glass monitor type thing. Um, it appears that this is a fairly low traffic star system. Uh, the sensors are currently showing a few uh, small, slow moving civilian vessels in system, uh, as well as an old style Miranda class starship, uh, which is holding position just a short distance away from the station itself. Uh, it all seems quite peaceful. Nothing's immediately jumping out. It looks like we've come into this. Oh, and yes. it's going to go wrong? Rather than just, like, being parachuted into the middle of something. Three is going to wander over to the, I'm assuming it's the comms, the ops desk uh, panel to check uh, the status of all the systems. Mm -hmm. See if there's any, like, um, just going to try some, check all this, the, the, if there's any anything trying to sneak in in the back door kind of thing. Sure. Okay. Oh, well, that, that's sort of two different questions there, really, then. So that's... Okay. Uh, did you mean... When you said system, did you mean star system, or did you mean station systems? The computer sta station systems. So if you're, if you're doing it... I guess I guess this would be kind of like a readiness check on the systems more than anything, to see if they're working properly. So, yeah, maybe... Can I get a, a reason engineering check? Uh, difficulty two. Oh, well, it still worked. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a complication. Um, a 20 and a 5... Mm. So you got one success, but the complication, that's not ideal. Um, as you as you start performing your sweep, uh, the system starts throwing some odd error codes at you. And, uh, you know, as you're scrolling through the different systems, you, you're kind of, you're unable to get a complete view of the current status. You, you don't have full access to everything right now. Huh. I can't seem to get into all of these uh, sensors. With the systems that you've got, you could try and roll, run a, a sensor sweep. It would, with that complication, though, here's the mechanical thing. Mm. That complication is going to increase the difficulty level of this. Okay. So you could run a sweep with what you've got, is what I'm saying, but it's going to be harder yeah. than it normally would be. I can run a scan, but it's not going to be 100% accurate. Mm. Would you like me to try? Yes, try oh. that. All right, um, I'll try it again. So this is a reason science task, and it's again the difficulty two. 14, oh, 14 and a 12. 12. <laughs> uh, for Rhea, you were aiming for... Well, you were aiming for 15 or under on reason science. Oh. So, luckily. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're able to uh, figure out a workaround, and uh, using the sensor arrays that you do have access to, which I will stress is not all of them, um, mm. You're able to not get quite a 360 view around the station, but let's just say you can get a sort of a scan of kind of the upper arc of the of the sphere, if that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there are a couple of anomalies that are thrown up. You are picking up some strange gravimetric distortions on the uh, the opposite side of the station from the uh, uh, Miranda class starship that's parked out there. Um, I think you should all have a look at this. Um, there's some really strange anomalies right over there. Uh, can I bring it up on the screen? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 
Again, this is not 100% accurate. I'm I'm working with limited sensors here. Hmm. Johnny kind of puts his hand on his chin and kind of looks quizzically at it. Can he make heads or tails of it in any way, shape, or form? Because he's not really... <laughs> You're not really a sciences guy, are you? Yeah. Uh, I guess do a reason science check for me then, though, difficulty two. Okay. It's a seven and a two. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you've read about something like this, and something in the back of your head is possibly from your tactical training, possibly from just Johnny being a bit of a Starfleet nerd. Um, something in the back of your head is screaming, there's a cloaked ship out there. Whether you're right or not, I can't tell you, but that's, that, that's what your in instinct is telling you. Johnny tenses up and looks at the rest of them. I think there's something out there. I, I think there's some kind of cloaked ship. And he tries to perform a sensor sweep. Okay. Well, it's, again, would be another reason science task. <laughs> the, the sensor <laughs> sweep is what we've just done, basically. That is what this. Well, he's, he's. I don't know if, if there's any kind of inclination, like it's, with security in mind, his experience of like he he's studious. That's one of his talents. He knows to some extent like tactical things to do with like cloaking and that kind of. Okay. Freya, Freya is going to look at him and be like, "Tacky on emissions." Let me check. And let's see. Oh, <laughs> twelve and Maybe ten. Not. I mean, you were aiming for. Well, uh, yeah, you were aiming for twelve and under Ooh, on that. Ooh. So I mean, doing better than you did when you were trying to use that tricorder that one time. Um, <laughs> <I'm surprised. laughs> yeah, you just there's there are some tacky on emissions out there. They're, they're very slight, and they but they seem to be what's causing this uh, graphometric distortion. Johnny, activate shields okay. on the station. Um, so yeah, you bring the shields up. Looking over his shoulder then, as he's pressed the button to do that, uh, he says to the rest of the group, uh, prepare yourselves, I think we're about to be under attack. We should probably try and hail them. Has anybody got a uh, diplomatic experience? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, not really. Is this a voice of somebody who you reckon's got diplomatic experience? I mean, I'm not sure mine is either, but I'll get it a go. Oh, if you're happy to take this step forward, let's, let's give it a try. So Lila will walk over to comms and open some healing frequencies and see if we get anything back. Sure, I don't need a check to open healing frequencies, but you, you can talk at your... Uh, well, what are you saying? It's basically, opening healing frequencies, you're opening a wideband thing. It, it, it can either be wideband or a focus thing if you can see what you're trying to talk to, but as you can't see it, you're sort of just broadcasting. What are you saying? Normally, I would start with the name of the the ship or the station we're on, and yeah. um, that's not. <laughs> you don't really have that. I mean, you could just say, yeah. "This is uh, a Federation starbase." Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're yeah. on a starbase, not on a ship. That's... Yeah. To the cloaked vessel approaching us, date your business, and then kind of clicks it off and goes, "I'm not very good at being diplomatic." That, that, that was good. That was good. I, 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 I'm a, I, I work with the warp car all day. I don't talk to people. I, I, I talk to people, but like in sick bay, like you know, there's a bit difference between bedside manner and hailing people. You, you did well. You did better than I would do. Thank you, doctor. Yeah, that was fine. I've I've had experience with aliens. That like you've just got to be casual about it. Believe me. <laughs> Super cash. Yeah, feed hot dogs. <laughs> oh, I that's it. That's the... your only experience. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Trying to get a balance between we're not so weak that you can just attack us and think you're getting away with it, and not actively provoking them into attacking us. That's a thin line to tread. There is silence in response to your hails. For a good 20, 30 seconds. No, I mean, no, while well, this conversation is going on, I mean, mm -hmm. you're not getting anything back, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe they're ignoring us. I suspect that as they've not attacked yet, 
They might be waiting for something, whether it's to gather intelligence or for backup. Or they've already got what they wanted and we're sitting in a time bomb. It's Romulans, especially. They're sneaky bastards. Johnny, still at the console, runs a scan for any kind of explosive elements that might be on the ship. Anything that might be out of place in particular is what he's looking for. Because then there's going to station, sorry. Oh. Yeah, in the, uh, the station itself, thinking like, oh, he's made him think of sabotage. Okay. Well, this would again probably be some kind of sensor scan. Um, so, yeah, can I get a uh, another recent science check from you? Difficulty one. Okay. Oh, wow, another great roll from you for that. Seven and four. Yeah. Uh, you're not picking up anything. Okay. Relieved. Johnny says, so uh, no, it doesn't look like there's anything on the station. So it must be, well, it just begs questions. Why are they just hanging out there? I gave the computer a scenario where we were going to undertake some kind of siege or some kind of attack, so... Brace yourselves, this this could happen at any second. And Johnny looks around the room um, to wherever phases might be stored. Uh, yeah, there's a weapons locker on the uh, side of the turbo lift shaft. J Johnny goes over to the uh, weapons and pulls out two phases for himself, holsters <laughs> one of them, puts one in his hand and then looks to the others and says I think we should arm up just in case Okay, there are now three phases to go between the other four. Johnny's not realised that yet and <laughs> if everybody's coming over to grab those phases then he'll start dispensing them until he's left with the two phases that are in his possession <laughs> and whoever's the final person to take one off of him Yeah, there were five in the container, there are five of you and you've pocketed to two of them <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to go without a phaser. My special AB piloting. So, I don't need no gun. I mean, good luck piloting a space station, but... <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> like, um... How, how does one pilot a space station? Slowly. <laughs> well, I think it's for the best, and Johnny begrudgingly passes over one of the phases and says... Well, I guess you're not going to see me live up to my namesake today. That's all right. Plenty of opportunities. Oh, yeah, we'll see. And he smiles kind of warmly, like, as if, like, th this is maybe, like, hey, this is a bonding moment. Maybe maybe these are some new friends. You're all kind of looking at Johnny uh, in the background. Um, through the glass in the distance, you see the Miranda Glass Starship explode. <gasps> Shock. Step back. I mean, you can't hear it because it's in space, but I mean, yeah. Whoa! Oh, my. oh God. Brack, what caused that? Scanning now. Um. They're going to get a uh, reason science check. <laughs> We're doing a lot of scanning. It's, it's fine. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's one God. success. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's going well. Um, uh, you detect, uh, it seems to be dissipating remnants of um, evidence of evidence of an expl of exploding photon torpedo. Sensors confirm that it's photon torpedo, sir. Who, who are we talk? Who, sir? Which which one of us is uh, sir? It's a habit. Well, just get a little bit flustered. Were you able to track a trajectory? Um, I'm doing that now. I'll do that now. Do I? I mean, uh, no, you uh, do not. Uh, you're... It was basically you. You, the, the, what you're picking up is the emissions of like this is the explosion is there, and the emissions that are given off around it are like this was blown up by a photon torpedo. Basically, you can't track anything in terms of trajectory or anything because you're you're only picking up like the the after yeah. the after like the casing of it and things yeah. like that. Maybe yeah. Um, I, I, computer can't trace it. Um, I have no idea where it's came from. At that point, the the station is rocked by a uh, a phaser blast uh, coming from the direction you've been picking up disturbances. The shields are holding, but they are down to sixty percent, and you can see decloaking a green vessel. Vessel decloaking. Looking at this vessel, is it? I mean, it's green, but is that Romulan or? Is it Klingon? You recognise this as a classic D7 battlecruiser. 
Oh. You don't see him around very much these days. An old one. We've got Klingons. It's a battle cruiser. Everybody brace yourselves. And Johnny looks back to the uh, controls. What kind of weaponry has he got at his disposal? You have one phaser bank. Okay, well... Johnny's going to take his chances with the uh, attack with the phaser bank, then. Okay. Uh, I think before we get to that, though, we should we should probably define whereabouts everybody is on this, in the uh, in the control room. There's a, a few different consoles here you can all use. They all have different um, kind of functions in battle and that, so... Um, uh, yeah, let's figure out what everybody's doing, where, where everybody's kind of situated themselves. Uh, we know Johnny is on the tactical console. Um, there's also a sensors console and a communications console. Uh, if you're on the starship, like the Tenzing, there'd also be a navigation station, uh, but that doesn't really apply here on the <laughs> on the space station. Um, somebody, if they like, can fill kind of what would be the captain's chair role on a, on a starship and just kind of... Your actions in that regard are more like you're kind of directing what you want other people to be doing and that, you know, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, Freya, Freya is on the sensor console, is she not? Sure. Uh, Katarin, uh, where are you? Well, I, I guess commanding officer as where as if you have coin. <laughs> Just fully leaning into the uh, location thing there, <laughs> but sure. And yeah. Uh, oh yeah, so I guess that's uh, Lila still on the comms then. All right. Uh, well, let, let's get into this combat. Can I take an aimed shot at their engines? Sure. Um, can I get a control security check from you? Uh, difficulty two. And uh, if someone else could roll for the station systems assist on this uh, weapon security, aiming for twelve or under on that one. I got one. One success. Well, I got a 14 and a 3 with the numbers. But... Yeah. And an 8. So yeah, okay, that's our two successes. So that's a hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's roll some damage then. Uh, for expediency's sake, uh, we're going to use the just the stats from the Tenzing's phaser bank here. It's just a single phaser bank on this station. Uh, so can you roll 6d6 for me? Six challenge dice, I should say. Okay. Um... Alright, two fives, a four, a three, a two, and a one. Uh, so yeah, right off the bat, we're discarding the four and the three. Uh, we get three points of damage from the one and the two, and an extra two points of damage from the two fives plus their effects. So that's a total of five damage that you've caused with this shot. Uh, now that damage is absorbed by their shields, uh, which seem to still be holding, uh, but I'll tell you, you have drained them a little bit. Uh, also, though, by rolling two fives, you've activated the versatile two effect uh, that this phaser bank has twice, which is going to generate you four extra momentum points. Ooh. So you've damaged their shields, but you've gained yourself quite a lot of momentum in the process. So, okay, <laughs> so that's Johnny's turn. Johnny is that—that that is your attacks. There, you've you've, you've aimed, you've fired, you've hit their shields, you've done damage to their shields. That's, that's what you can do. Cool. It's now their turn, and uh, they're going to be firing back at the space station. Uh, so I'm going to make basically the same check you did. Uh, it's a 15, a 6, and a 2. So, uh, yeah, they are they are also hitting you back. That is a hit. Uh, I'm going to roll some damage. They actually have slightly f more powerful phasers than you do on this station. Um, so I'm going to could be a little bit more devastating uh, whether you want to blame Johnny for that for upping the difficulty of the simulation I'll leave up to you um, <laughs> okay so uh, that's three ones two threes a four five and a six uh, so I also roll five points of damage looks like so uh, yeah the deck plating beneath all of you shakes violently under the impact there's a brief shower of sparks <laughs> falling from somewhere you're not quite sure and uh, your shields are now down to 30 percent so who wants to go next um i'm just not sure that there's much for Leela to do with comms at the moment <laughs> Uh, well, here's some things you can do. Here's your communications tasks. I mean, you still get a turn whether you want to do much or else. Okay. So there's quite a lot of different things you can do. Uh, in fact, one of the things you can do is uh, regenerate shields. Okay, yes, I will do that. Yeah. Because that seems sensible. So regenerate shields. Can I get a control engineering check from you? Difficulty one. And somebody else uh, roll 1d20 for the uh, station, please. I'll do that. Okay. 
Ooh, 17 and a 14, uh, and four from you, Mark. So, got so a bit. Oh, difficulty one though. So yeah, just made it. <laughs> so the station itself um, roll, thankfully done there by you, Mark. Thank you, uh, is what saved you on that. So you have uh, regained two points of shield. So I, I'm basically considering the points of shields to be 10% of the shields for the purposes of winging my way through this combat. <laughs> so you're back up to uh, 50% of shields from from 30. Okay, so that's your turn. So the, it's the Klingons, uh, Klingons turn yet again. Um, they're still fighting to get your shields down. Um, so this is a little bit of a repetitive round here. Uh, but they are moving their ship in um, a little closer as well. They're trying to close the distance. It looks like they're trying to get into transporter range. Um, obviously they can't transport through your shields, but they are making a move. So this time they fire their disruptor cannons uh, instead of their phasers. Uh, now they're in close range, they can use those. Uh, 15, a 3 and a 2, so that's definitely another hit. Let's roll some damage. Ooh, two twos, three threes, three fives, and a six. So that's eight points of damage to your station. And your shields come crashing down. Um, electrical relays blow out. You're all rocked around violently as the lights flicker above you, uh, plunging you all into darkness for just a second before uh, red emergency lighting comes on. Uh, steam is coming from somewhere. <laughs> things, uh, things aren't looking great. We're all doing the, uh, the, sh the shaking shuffle. Oh yeah, the camera is moving all over the place. <laughs> Someone is Shake. jumping up and down on the camera, Dolly. Shaky cam. <laughs> Shaky cam. Shaky cam. Um, so, uh, Faria, what would you like to do? I'd like to try and secure comms so that we can and create a force field around the comm. So that they can't beam straight in here. Ops, do you mean? Ops, even. Yeah. Um, okay. This is less, I guess, something specific you can do with your console. Um, and I guess more of like, this would be your character doing something as an engineering task, I think. Because this is a bit fast and loose. I guess, yeah. This isn't a specific option on the sensors console. Mm. But you can, I guess, you, yeah, this would be a security thing you can attempt to sort of jury rig some kind of engineering solution for this I'll, I'll uh, bypass the generator for something yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so this okay. is a bit of a tricky one um, for you okay. but this is going to be a difficulty three um, difficulty three I think reason engineering so you're aiming for 15 or under um, remember you have four points of momentum to spend as well I was going to say do I use one point one point will get you an extra die. If you spend three points total, that'll get you two extra dies. I say go mad for it. Go for two? Yep, I, I, I'm fully up for that. <laughs> I, I think this is a pretty desperate situation. The difficulty's turned up. Because the slower we... Because if they get into ops, it's, it's, it's game over. So if we can slow them down, then we stand. We can at least feel a bit, fight back a bit. Resist. I mean, momentum's there to be spent. I'm staying out of this with my NPC character. <laughs> Use it. Okay. Okay. Well, you get two anyway, so if, you, if you're using it, you could get you can roll 4d20. 4 20 Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for 15 or under, so that is doable. Yeah, three successes. Woo! Good use of the momentum there. So, yes, you're able to, um, with some quick thinking and engineering uh, knowledge erect a sort of hasty force field around I guess the, the sort of control area that you're in because ops is basically the whole room you're in you do think that you haven't got the whole room covered but nobody can nobody will be able to get out of the turbo lift and into the area with you sort of thing you, you've blocked off the room as far as you can but there are, might still be some bits where people could sort of get onto the station mm -hmm. I've managed to to block them for. Uh, 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 it might not hold them for long. Someone might slip through still, but I've done a, the best force field that I can get out of these systems. Everybody, re ready your weapons. 
So the next thing you hear, it's still shaking and steam flying everywhere and, and things, um, but the next thing you hear is the sound of transporters coming from within the turbo lift. The doors are closed, but you, so they're a bit muffled, but you definitely hear the sounds of transporters operating within the, uh, the turbo lift. The door starts to creak open, but um, the end, you see the end of a, um, what looks to be the end of a bat lift come out in between the two turbo lift doors and just start trying to force them open, but it does reach your force field and just sort of stick onto it for a second before it's pulled back. The doors are still open a crack though, and you can, you can hear the sounds of some rowdy ass Klingons in that turbo lift. Katarin being in the command position, just says, um, been a pair of eyes on that turbo lift. I'm wondering, is it open enough that we should be able to fire at them? You can take a shot, if you want to. I think it's probably worth it. If you're taking a phaser shot, I'm going to need a uh, control security check from you then. Um, normally it'd be difficulty two, uh, but they're in pretty heavy cover, I would say, uh, what with the door only being open just a crack, so this will be difficulty three. You can 100% take the shot, you can make the attempt, but I'm uh, just letting you know it's going to be a bit of a tricky one. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully I won't destroy everything around us. <laughs> I assume. 11 and 5. Okay, you got yeah. one success. So with your only one remaining point of momentum, the only way to get a uh, get a hit here is going to be to getting a crit on that extra dice. So it's it's up to you what you want to do here. Spend that momentum or not. But 11 and a 5 on, on that. It would be a waste. Yeah. So you fire... Yeah. Um, you are within the force field, so... It does kind of spark off of the turbo lift um, sort of panel and everything, and you did, the one you be, you were kind of looking at that you could just about see through the gap just pull himself back a little bit, and um, you hear some sounds of a battle ready sort of Klingons kind of laughing in there. Obviously, the one who's pulled himself back, but yes, you do you do miss your shot there. Oh well, worth a go. Managed to make one of them step back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling on through the combat order then, uh, from within the turbo lift, uh, another bat lift swings out uh, to try and to just sort of batter its way uh, through Faria's force field just with sheer strength. Uh, so I'm going to roll an attack for that. Okay, 12 and a 15. So, uh, so yeah, the, the bat lift rebounds. Um, this huge spreading wave of static flashing across the field. Your force field is still up, Faria. Um, the hit didn't penetrate. But you're not sure how much longer it's going to last under sustained attack. Johnny's kind of stuck at the console, and like he's torn between the immediate threat on the bridge and what he's already doing, mm -hmm. and uh, takes another shot at the uh, the ship. Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, can I get a control security check from you then? Uh, difficulty two. Two tens. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's another hit on the uh, increasingly closer <laughs> Klingon D7 cruiser. Uh, let's roll some damage. Uh, so can I get six D6 from you, if you please? So that's a three, three fours, a five, and a six. Okay, so you only do two points of damage, again, to the shields. They seem to soak them up. Um... But again, you've activated two effects, so uh, yeah, once once again, you gain back four points of uh, momentum from that uh, that attack. Nice. So yeah, I mean, worth it just for the momentum generator, really. <laughs> so back back in the back in the turbo lift, then um, yet another bat lift swings out. Uh, let's roll another attack. Nine and four. Okay, so that's a, that's a hit this time. I'm going to roll some damage. That's a total of two points of damage. So here's what happens then. Um, the Batleth swings out. Sort of a slightly more direct hit than the previous one. Uh, the force field holds, but you can see the tip of the Batleth has pierced through into uh, the room itself. The, as it pulls back again, the force field closes over, but that's definitely done some more damage. Have we got access to... Transport control. Uh, can we can, can we attempt to beam the Klingons back off of the ship? 
y you do, it's, it's part of the census console. Okay. So, can I, I mean, do it? Yeah. <laughs> if, it's, you can, yeah. You can offer it as a suggestion. It's worth a go. I mean... All right. I have transporter control. Correctly, that's a stroke of luck. Each, <laughs> any chance you can try and beam the Klingons to the brig or back to their own ship? Let's see if she'll agree with me. Right. Do your thing. I'm still not over the West Country accent. So this is uh, <laughs> <laughs> control engineering. Um, so did you say you're not? Did you say you're not over? It? I'm not over it. It's, it gets me every time. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Uh, so this is uh, control engineering, which is engineering is your thing, so that's good. Um, you're in 15 or under, and it's normally would be difficulty one, but you're doing it, I think, against uh, this would be against hostile invaders. I, I, I guess it would, you know, they're they're not standing still to be transported. That, that's a way of no, yeah, they're it. Uh, yeah, they're they're being uncooperative. Yeah, you can't <laughs> beam them back to their ship. Because um, the shields are re-raised on the ship in between, they very briefly drop down to transport them over and then raise them again before Johnny could fire back again. Uh, can I put them into like a, a cargo bay, maybe? You well, okay, like, sure. Seal, seal the cargo bay so they can't get out. Or you can, well, okay. Let's say yes, you can beam the ones away if you, yeah. Difficulty two. Let's say we'll, we'll get to that I mean, point. I could beam them into space, but. I'm leaving that choice up to you. <laughs> she, I don't think that's that really in her character, really, to put them into space unless ordered to. <laughs> Look, yeah, I, I, it's them. up to you. It... No. Cargo base, fine. Okay, can I get a control engineering check for me then, difficulty two? Oh. Oh, that's not so good. Oh. That's a complication and a failure. Um. You, uh, so yeah, you, you bring up the uh, transporter controls on that, uh, on your console, and uh, as you go to power up the transporter array, um, there's another shower of sparks from somewhere, and your force field drops down. And the transporters do not engage. There's obviously a power drain somewhere. Everybody to the door! Eyes on the door! We're about to have company. The door is forced open and in rush five Klingons. We don't think they're here for tea and crumpets. <laughs> Somehow, I think you might be right. It's a lot of very quick banter happening here while these Klingons yep. are rushing in. <laughs> yeah, fire, fire faces. Yep. <laughs> firing. <laughs> okay. Are you, you're firing, are you? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um... So I guess, well, I guess it's Lila's turn if we're sort of in combat order here. I'm, I'm kind of we're we're a bit fast and loose with this, but nice. yeah. I will fire at them. Yeah. So this is a control security difficulty two. That pretty much my worst combination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're a scientist. You're not a uh, thirteen or nine. That's not bad. That's one. Uh, control and. Control security. Yeah, you were aiming for ten or under. Okay, um, you can. You've got momentum if you want to spend one. Is it worth it? Do well, you you've got a fifty-fifty chance of getting another success. True. I say go for it. Even if you just spend one and give it a go, try your chances. Okay, we'll try it. We'll see. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Not to the banter back and forth is a little too distracting for Ensign uh, Anderson, and uh, you miss your phaser shot. <laughs> One of the Klingons uh, rushes forward uh, towards uh, where Johnny is standing and uh, takes a swing at him with his batleth. Oh. Uh, 15 and a 12, so uh, that's actually a miss, so <laughs> you're lucky there, Johnny. He runs forward and uh, t swings at you, and uh, his uh, batleth just crunches into the side of the console that you were behind, kind of embedding itself in the in the framework there. And the, the Klingon just sort of looks at you angry, just sort of spitting a bunch of... Klingon curses of which you know you, you don't know the meaning of but they sound pretty angry <laughs> as he's ducking Johnny goes ha, fuck you too <laughs> uh, Kataran you have uh, five very angry looking Klingons uh, just rushing into the room in front of you uh, what would you like to do so I might try and throw an unarmed punch 
Sure. Uh, yeah, you can. Cl the closest Klingon. You can punch a dude. Yep. And I've got unarmed strike as a weapon type, and the quality is knockdown. I've got two beside it, so what that do is you if you get the effect. Okay. So you got to you got to roll a uh, daring security check for me. Difficulty one. There we go. Well, that's a complication and uh, and a success, but you got a complication in that as well. So, hmm. what's the complication with punching a Klingon? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ge I'm genuinely intrigued. We'll get to the complication. You got a success, so let's roll your damage first, and then then we'll uh, then we'll roll a complication here. Six and two. A six and a two. Okay, so you actually you do three points of damage to him. You punch him in the in the face. Um, because you got the six, that's an effect, so that actually knocks him down. Nice. Uh, as you knock him down, um, he drops his batleth, uh, which stabs you in the foot. <laughs> uh, so, so in that in, in that instance, Katara throws the punch. He goes, "Have it," and then gets the batleth in his foot. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Uh, I guess I should probably roll some damage for that. Not, it's not going to be the full battle of damage, but this is because this is an accidental stab. But <laughs> it's not. Well, it's a, uh, not very. Okay, okay. Well, we'll just say I mean, you, you take it's one. A point. It's, it's, a it's a holographic. It's a holographic point of damage. Yeah, I rolled a yeah. three on the dice, which technically means no damage. But it's a, from, a, from a narrative standpoint, it's uh, yeah. it. Yeah. I think Kataran is like. I like to think he's done amateur dramatics in the past. He's leaning into the role. Fair enough. Uh, okay, so the, this Klingon, yeah, you've uh, you've done a little bit of damage. You've knocked him down, but he's he's definitely still conscious. He's definitely still with us. Stay down, you bastard! <laughs> I mean, he doesn't really look that hurt. I'm going to say. That's why, if I get a chance on the next turn, I'm going to kick you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you say out loud to him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just airing my intentions. Yeah, and now I'm going to do this. Um, okay, well, let's go back round then. Uh, I guess... Um, what is Faria doing now? Oh, uh, panicking. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably fumbling with her phaser and aiming and just firing at the, the closest Klingon. Sure, okay. Can I get a uh, control security check from you? Please, difficulty two. There we go. Six and one. Wow, okay, so that's a crit. Um <gasps> with the one uh, which just means you get two successes just off of the one dice it doesn't do double damage I don't think mm -hmm. um, but it's a crit anyway so you get three successes there so you get a point of momentum back for that which pays for the, the gamble earlier so roll some damage for me please 5d6 Ooh. Ooh, 5, 2, 4 is a 3 and a 1 so yeah we discard the 4s and the 3s does two points of damage uh the five what's the effect charges uh just means you can charge it up if you want to so uh yeah no. oh. um but yeah two points of damage and you got to shoot a guy <laughs> Bizarre. Bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's he's you know he's, he, ta still he takes the hit and, yeah he's, he's still kind of coming <laughs> at you he takes the hit like you know these klingons are kind of armored and that and everything he takes the hit and it does knock him sort of sideways a bit into the wall um but he's he's not dead let's just call it that way that, that's a good way you, you shoot a guy and it knocks him back into the wall but he's not dead <laughs> so for real you're, you're almost shocked that you you've shot this klingon and you you sort of you know that's sort of like wow that's probably is that you say that's probably the first time you you shot someone even though they're holographic and everything well besides from training yeah from but i mean that's a lot academy, of that just yeah. sort of targets sort of thing yeah um, yeah this is the first time she shot like yeah. someone well so you're feeling pretty accomplished at making the shot at least uh and then you see another five klingons beam in <gasps> battleths raised war cries shouted at ear splitting volume as they pile towards the group of you So, sitting around a table in Ten Forward, um, a little later, how are you all feeling? <laughs> <laughs> well... Guitar Angel just says, Well, whose bright idea was that, then? I, I mean, it broke the ice between us, at least. It broke my toes. Yeah. I've healed uh, now, you're fine. Haru is running a, uh, a sort of soothing thing over your foot and so, said, yeah, that should be fine. Yes, it's, it's good. We've got our medic. We, 
we've patched you up. We, we came through it at least. Um, I don't know how I feel though about tomorrow. Well, tomorrow? whatever it is, is probably going to go better than that did. Yeah, yeah. I, um... Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have turned the difficulty up. Sorry about that, guys. I mean, I, I suppose it's better being thrown into the deep end. Well, well, we won't be going into tomorrow being overconfident, that's for sure. Yeah, I think we just take it one step at a time tomorrow. Yeah, we should all, we should all rest up. I'll second that. Uh, at this point, um, Bond walks in, and Johnny, you see him first as he's, he's heading towards the table. Oh, hey, hey, Bond! And he gives him a wave. Oh, hey, uh, Johnny, how's it going? Uh, oh. Hey, for real. How are you? How are you all getting on? Uh, oh, um, not bad. Yeah, yeah. It's a, we, we've just been training. We've got a uh, special assignment. We're going to be competing against the other ships. Oh, well, if you need any help? Let me know. I mean, unfortunately, oh, well. they can only take one ensign from each department. Ah, well. Oh, well. Let me know how it goes, I guess. <laughs> well, it'll go better than the training. <laughs> Johnny had us fighting Klingons. Poor Kataran got a little bit roughed up. Uh, Klingons, eh? J- Johnny, I don't know if you pick up on this. For real, you probably do. Bond is sort of giving a look of... A little bit wide-eyed of, like, Johnny had you fighting Klingons. Sort of like, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah, for real, I was just like, yeah, yeah, I didn't really enjoy it. He's kind of, just kind of like, I didn't really enjoy fighting the Klingons. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny's a little <laughs> bit crestfallen. He's, he's not so happy that it didn't go so well. And just kind of like, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we fought hard. We tried. But... I got a good shot. Got one in the face. Oh wow! I did. I did punch one and knock it down. Oh. I never have punched a Klingon before. <laughs> good going, I guess. Yeah, good going until it's Batleth then fell on my foot. Oh. Fine, we have Doctor. Harry just gives Bond a wave. Um, he says, oh, "Well, uh, I, I just uh, stuff enough to get a drink." Um. Uh, I should probably probably leave you all to it, huh? Well, actually, I, I think we might be done for the day. And he kind of looks around the group. Um, I, I guess I'll catch you guys tomorrow. We'll, we'll see what happens. We should uh, probably... Bond, should we get a drink? Oh, I was... Uh, I, I want to see it for real. I wanted to get a drink, actually, uh, Donny. Oh, 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 sorry. So, sorry. And he kind of smiles towards Freya. Says, oh, oh well, I'll, I'll leave you guys to to it. Um, well, um, thanks to the rest of you. Um, I guess, yeah, apologies for what happened. But tomorrow's another day. We'll see what happens. And uh, yeah, have a good evening. And he, he leaves to go back to his waters. I feel so sorry for Johnny. <laughs> I feel so sad. Oh no! I was trying to think. I was trying to think. Yeah, would jump in and save him, but I don't think she would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Bond uh, Bond goes off and gets himself a drink, and uh, on returning, he uh, he takes Johnny's vacant seat. Um, says, uh, well, well, tell me, tell me a bit more about this uh, this this special mission. Then you know, you, what, what do you mean you you're competing against other ships? Did you say? Well, that's a trick question, you see, because we have no idea. It's all we know mystery. is, it's exactly all we know is we're we're each an ensign from a different department or division of the starships yeah. or of Starfleet. You know, yeah, know. this uh, this 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 this, uh, this synthetic the synthetic meats go into my skull. Um, we don't know what we're going to be doing, but we've all got special specialist skills from different fields. Huh. Well, that's... I don't know if I've heard of something like that before. I mean, everyone knows you have occasional sports competitions and whatnot, but... Huh. Yeah, we don't know what, is it, what it's about, or we don't know what, what we're going to face, so... Johnny had the good idea of 
having us work on the holodeck and a program, but um, it was a little bit more difficult than we anticipated. He does like messing with the difficulty. Huh? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not sure how much was him changing the difficulty and how much was our... Um, Lack of experience? Let's let's go with that. That sounds nicer than what I was going to say. I, 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 that was the first time since the academy I fired a phaser. Uh, yeah. Well, you managed to hit a target, unlike I, me. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm, it didn't blow up in my hand. But yeah, I got one. Yeah, good job. Yeah, to be fair, it was the first time I've taken command of any situation, really. I felt, to well, be honest, I felt a little bit out of my depth. I don't think anybody, any of us were in command of anything. <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't really feel like I was in command. I was just scrambling around like the rest of you. Do- uh. Doctor speaks up. We, we didn't really, We didn't really plan anything before we went in, did we? We just kind of let it because I sort of stepped into the holodeck and that's what happened but then we don't know what's coming so we can't really prepare so yeah Yeah. I think it was a good experience for us to how see how we since none of us have worked together but um it's not necessarily it's not necessarily a bad thing that we failed in that no. It just it just shows it's sh- it's an experience and it shows us where we need to do better in future. So, all right, I'll admit I was a bit funny with Johnny when while we were sitting here, but I think he meant well. And to be fair, if he suggested it again, I'd say yes. Well, what kind of what, what kind of program did you say he was running? It's some kind of. Klingon war thing, or...? Uh, we were commanding the space station, and um, a Klingon uh, battlecruiser uh, blew up uh, the ship. No, was no. Not- no. To be fair, to be fair, he did put in for a randomised encounter. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> it was a little bit beyond us. Yeah. Uh, that, that, can, that can happen, especially with those random programs. Uh, better luck tomorrow, though, I guess, huh? I, I'm going to um, head off. Uh, I think a nice um, early night would, would be a good idea. Bunch, do you want to walk me back? Well, oh, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry to, like, be during your drink that. I'm just a bit tired. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, um, it's sort of... <laughs> You can see him sort of drawn, but like stuck between. Do I neck it? Do I leave it? Do I neck it or do I leave it? He leaves the drink what on the would table. Johnny, do <laughs> he, he leaves the drink on the table? To, oh, okay, uh, see you all later. But as they walk it off, Takaran just looks and goes, "Who are? Who are?" <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's the button on the episode then. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, We'll be back in two weeks' time on Thursday, September the 1st for episode 100 of the podcast, and we sincerely hope you'll join us for that. Uh, In the meantime, you can find links to all of our online presences, including our Discord server, our merch store, and our Ko-Fi page at pretendingwithdice.com. But for now, that's our show. We hope you all enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.